less. Lord, let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For, Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. I remember as a, 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 young, a young boy growing up on the west side of San Antonio, Texas. <laughs> I grew up, uh, my best friend, and I'm going to change the name to protect, to protect the innocent. Uh, my best friend was Carl Smith. And, 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 and Carl and I grew up together uh, from young kids. We were, I can remember being in first grade with him. Uh, second grade, we had Miss Bumpers with our teacher. Third grade, Miss Moore. Uh, fourth grade, Miss Cromer. Uh, Lord, listen, I can remember all the teachers that I had. And, and Carl was my, my, my best friend. He was my running buddy. He lived around the corner from us. Uh, we used to play together. Uh, we played basketball together, football. Back then, we used to play uh, Smear the Queer. I don't know if y'all remember that. Uh, we played uh, Red Light, Green Light. You know, we played some Mother May I. You know, we, we played all those games outside. Uh, yeah, we, you know, we played in the same basketball league, little league, on the same team, and on the same uh, football team. Uh, as a matter of fact, when we moved to San Antonio from Mobile, Alabama, his family moved from Mobile, Alabama as well. And we, we were really close. So the families were, were close. As a matter of fact, my mother lives in Mobile, Alabama now, around the corner from his mother in Mobile. They moved back. I mean, so so Carl was, was my, my, my best friend. He was my best friend. And I can never forget the day that, that my father came in one day um, from work and and I don't know what had transpired that day but he came in and he just looked at me and said I don't want you playing with Carl no more and I went, whoa, 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 whoa. And, and he didn't give me a whole lot of explanation um, um, he just referred to it says he's going in the wrong direction Now you gotta understand, this is my best friend, and, and you know, this is who I, 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 I ran with all the time. And, and, and my father was telling me, I don't want you with him anymore. So, you know, you know, uh, it was tough, but you know, growing up back then, you know, once your father had said the word, you may not like it. You know, but we came from one of those households where capital punishment was on a regular. Mm -hmm. He had no problem painting the back porch red. Some of y'all catch that later, you know. Yeah, 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 you know. Yeah, he understood. And we understood when he said something, he meant business. So Carl and I, and this must have been around, I must have been around 15 by this time when he said this. You know, uh, it was shortly after that, shortly after that, um, Carl did just start doing some things that were just out of character. He just went a different way. And, and, and Greg, I remember uh, Carl, Carl uh, robbed the convenience store around the corner from our house. Now the truth, you know, had my father not told me, I would have been right with him when he did it. Then I look back over the time after Carl and I went our separate ways, and Charlene, I look back and I, and I realize that, that my father was right. Carl was doing some things, and, and I knew he was doing some things that I had not shared with our, my, my, my parents, and, and of course, you know, yeah, if you're not careful, peer pressure will get the best of you. I remember Carl. <laughs> Carl used to skip out of school, <laughs> go home, get the car, come back and pick me up. <laughs> and we're like 12, 13, and 14 years old doing this. 
I mean, I mean, just George. Matter of fact, and this will this take it to another level. Um, we, uh, my, my first concert that I went to was Rick James and the Stone City Band. <laughs> Somebody know what I'm talking about here. Hey, 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 one or two, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, come talk back to me. You, know, you, remember, you remember that concert? And so uh, uh, Carl's parents were supposed to take us to the concert, and uh, and they didn't feel like taking us. So his daddy gave him the keys, and we drove to the concert, and we're 14 years old. My father saw something that 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 I thought was cool, but he knew was going in the wrong direction. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. What does it mean to be blessed? Let's walk with this thing. What does it mean to be blessed? Bless you. Bless is one of those words we just throw out kind of loosely. I'm, I'm too blessed to be stressed. You know, you know, we get a Cadillac. Lord, I am blessed. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you come on, like talk. Okay, yeah, whatever it is, you know, the Lord is blessing me with this new house. The Lord bless me with this new dress. The Lord bless me with Lord, Lord man. Listen, we are good. If 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 if, if bless was uh, considered just by trinkets, things. That would mean that those who have a house, they're blessed, and those who don't have a house, they're not blessed. Those who are driving a car, and those who are at the bus stop, eh, you're not as blessed as I am. No, no. See, see, we get confused with blessing as being things of cash, check, or money order. Things, things, no, no. No, blessing is a, is a posture, is a position, it's, it's, it's a, a, a form of happiness. It's a form of joy. The scriptures make it clear that to be blessed means that you have an anointing on your life. And you need to get this. You have an anointing on your life. There's something, God has an anointing on your life that, that, that things are going to, to work out. How we do there's an anointing on your life. That's what it basically means to be blessed. Now, now, now let's just struggle through the scripture real quick and, and, and bring it home. The, first of all, I'll talk to you about the people that are blessed. Blessed is a man who walks not, walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, does not stand in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. A blessed man and it's, 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 it's not gender sensitive, so it's woman, boy, girl, whatever, does not do three things. Does not walk, does not stand, does not sit. And they don't do these three things with three people. Ungodly folk, sinners, scornful. Scornful. If I want to be blessed, if I want to be blessed, if I want to have this anointing, this blessing on my life, there are three things that the scripture says I cannot do. I cannot walk with the ungodly. I can't stand with sinners. And I cannot sit with the scornful. Now listen. When the Bible makes reference to a person's walk, what it's making reference to, Steve, is the fact that, that their walk dictates the character of their life. So what is your character like? What is your character like? What is your character like? What's your character like? What is my character like? My character will become like the folk I hang out with. Bottom line. You know, far too often we worry about our reputation when God says, look at your character. Your reputation is who people say you are. Your character is who you really are. If my character is right, my reputation will take care of itself. So, so, so we, 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 we look at their walk. And the walk that they have 
means that they cannot get their counsel from ungodly folk. That means that when I need help, when I need information, when I'm struggling for information, I need some direction, I don't get my information from ungodly folk. I don't get my advice from, un you know, if I really want to have this blessing in my life, I cannot afford to get ungodly counsel. Now, 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 I believe that the Bible needs to be practical as biblical. When we say this, that basically means that, you know, you know, you, everybody has that, that person they know that, you know, listen, when they're in a jam, you say, listen, I know you know how to get over, so why don't you? I'm not taking advice from folk who tell me, you know, listen, look, look, now, yeah, listen, all you have to do is go downtown, get in that line. <laughs> tell them that you lost your social security card. Give them a name. Walk, walk with me. And, and, and FEMA gonna give you this money. I'm trying to help somebody. Because when you do that, you, when we think we're getting over, what we're really doing is taking the anointing off our life. So you have sold your anointing that God wants for you for a $1,500 voucher. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners. Now listen, listen. If you look at the scripture, it, 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 it's a gradual process. You, you start off walking with them then you stand with them. You stand with them. You stand with them. What that means is that, that you stand in the way that you know that they're going. So you hang out in the area. You hang out with the folk. You hang out where you know they're going to walk by. So you can encounter and engage with them. Listen, it's like back in the day. It's not like, like I'm not in the club. I'm in the parking lot. <laughs> you know, you just, just hang it out in the parking lot. And so the scripture is, is, is making it clear that there's a gradual process. Listen, you don't just become a thug. It's a process. So, so, so the walk is first and, and then, and then the, the stance. You stand in the way of sinners. Now, now when it makes reference to sinners, we're talking about folk who make it a practice of doing wrong. Folk who make it a practice where it's okay, it's acceptable. Folk who think it's acceptable to lie still and cheat. And let, 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 let me help us, help us. And all these folk are not outside the church. I mean, you know, listen, listen, because we, we, we all have our struggles. So, so some of us are even in the church. The Bible says that, that I don't stand with those sinners. You know, nor then listen, then you graduate to sitting. Sit in the seat of the scornful. Listen. Those who are scornful, what it makes reference to is, listen, a sinner is someone who who recognizes that what they're doing is wrong, but they just choose to do it anyway. That they, you know, that, that's what he's making reference to. Uh, I'm doing it wrong, I just choose to do it anyway. And then the scornful are those people, when it makes reference in this scripture here, are those people who say that, that uh, what I'm doing is not wrong. They go contradictory to God's word, regardless. That, that, that's their, their position. So, so, so and, 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 the, and the issue here is, it's a gradual process. Start off by walking, then I, then I start standing, and then I'll find myself a seat. I'll just be a part of them. That's what, be who I, I am. That's who I am. That's the direction that I'm going. If we, if we follow the wrong counsel, then we will stand with the wrong company and finally sit with the wrong crowd. My father recognized Carl's walk. And, and he knew that it wouldn't be long before I'd be standing with him. And eventually seated in front of a judge <laughs> with him. Now, that's, 
first thing the scripture says. Then go to verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Y'all see that? He goes from the negative in verse 1, what not to do, to the positive of what to do in verse 2. Delight. Delight. But his delight. So much so, it, 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 you enjoy it so much that you're drawn to it and you're driven by it. If you really want to know what you are delighted in, what you have to examine in your life, what I have to examine in my life is those things that I'm drawn to. Those things that drive me. Those things that, let me, let me give, tell you. If you had a few minutes extra time, what would you do? If you had some extra money, what would you do with it? Because these are kind of, kind of indications of what I'm drawn to. It's, it's kind of like, uh, I enjoy playing golf. Probably too much, but I enjoy it. Uh, 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 I'll be honest, I enjoy it a lot. And as a matter of fact, uh, you know, I can have plans in the day, and and you know, if it's supposed to be cold that day, you know, I have everything on my agenda to do for work, and then the temperature goes up just a little bit, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the sun comes out. I say, well, maybe I guess going over and just play for a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. Because it's what, what the scripture is making reference to is that the word of God, your relationship with God, you know, you are delighted in so much so that you're drawn to it. When you get into your car, the first thing you ought to be drawn to is turn on Christian radio rather than, I'm trying to help somebody. <laughs> You know, you know, the, the, the first thing you ought to want to do is you know, when you have a few moments to read, ought to be drawn to read something that's inspirational yeah. rather than something that's messy. <laughs> mm -hmm. that's because, because, listen, listen, because what's happening is, is what I'm drawn to is then putting me in a position to be blessed. To have this anointing on, on, on our lives. So you are know, delight in the law. When the law it talks about, it's really a reference to the Pentateuch, the, the uh, Mosaic law, the first five books of the Bible, uh, but the law, the instructions from the word of God. How do you get my instructions from the word of God? And this word of God is what I meditate on. Now, when we talk about meditation, you know, the easiest way to explain meditation is worry. Worrying is a form of meditation. When I worry, I begin to run through my head everything that could happen. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like um, you're driving down the freeway and you know that you have a couple of outstanding tickets. And you go in down there, you, you want to buy 85, 90, and you see that car popped on the side of the road. And those lights come on. You begin to meditate <laughs> on everything that can happen. You know, a lot of people mind. I know I got those tickets out there. I would mess around being in jail. Uh, you know, listen, I just spent my last money. I can't call nobody to get me out. Oh Lord, if I call my mama one more time and tell her. <laughs> That's what meditation is. So, 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 so the word of God, he's saying, take the word of God and just meditate on it. You know, like, you know, uh, just take a scripture and say, my God shall supply every one of my needs according to his riches and glory. And what would happen is, so, so whenever I get to a position where, where I lack a, a, have a need, I just start meditating on that scripture. My God shall supply. If it's peace, you know, my God shall supply the peace. You know, I don't have to worry about this. You know, I recognize that everything may be going on around me, but you know what, well, listen, I got peace on, on within me. You know, I started meditating on that scripture. So what he's saying is what you do is you take that and you meditate on it both day and night. Now let me explain that. 
that to you. You know, listen, I know that, that, that we're not walking around, riding around being these holy rollers and just, you know, too blessed to be stressed, too annoyed to be disappointed, and all this other kind of stuff. What it's saying is, you know, I, I take a scripture, I may have a scripture that, that I'm meditating on. It may to be one scripture, and I have it taped to my mirror in my, in my bathroom. So when I begin to brush my teeth, I just, you know, I'm forced to kind of look at that scripture. And I look at the scripture and I just start thinking about it throughout the day and then I begin to, to memorize the scripture. And then what you'll find, you say, stuff doing, you start your day with that scripture. And then when you go to bed, last thing you just say, I'm gonna repeat this scripture before I go to sleep. You know, and, and you start to begin to meditate and what it means in your life, what it means in my life. And listen, and what happens is as I begin to meditate on those scriptures, I begin to walk in those scriptures. I begin to, to believe in, I be begin to trust God in those scriptures, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Now, I trust him because he's trustworthy. I acknowledge him in everything I do. Look, 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 look. I mean, it, can you imagine if you just acknowledge God in everything you did? You know, listen, when you when you began to, to uh, eat your dinner, your breakfast, you just acknowledge, thank you, Lord, for this meal. You know, when you go to your closet and you're saying, what should I wear? I don't know what to wear. What you going to wear? I don't know what to wear. You know, I thank God that I got something to wear. Amen. I, I thank God that I got a choice in what I wear. Just begin to just just, just to begin to thank him and, and just acknowledge him in all your ways. And listen, you can acknowledge him on the golf course. Listen, 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 let me tell you. I just thank God that I can play golf today. You know, let, 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 I thank God that my back is not hurting and I can swing through the club, you know. Yeah. I thank God that I got somebody who I can play with, some friends I can play with. I mean, just acknowledge him. And it, it'll be amazing what can happen if you just start acknowledging God in all that you do. Okay. So that's, that, that, that's, that's what it means to meditate on both day and, and night. So, 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 one of the greatest ways to tell Sorry, how I can tell my spiritual maturity in God is the things that I meditate and think about. What, what is capturing my thought process? Things that I may not talk about, but things I think about. Which, the things I think about will give an indication of my spiritual maturity and where my heart is. The things I think about. So as I begin to think about them, I really need to examine and say, what is that about? God, you need to work with me in this area. Clearly, you know, <clears throat> I mean, you know, you, you know, you know, uh, you, know you play in spades. It's not going to be practical for, 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 for y'all. Yeah? You, 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 play, you play in spades or whatnot, and, and, <clears throat> and you know, and you reneged, and you know you reneged, but, but nobody else called it. <laughs> And listen, you know, you know, he said, Look how the Lord has blessed us. He blessed us with a with tea. No, 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 no. You cheated. <laughs> you cheated. That's what you did. And, 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 and so, but, but, but listen, but, but, uh, let's talk about Because if, if, if I'm thinking about cheating, there's a window in my heart that, that there's an integrity issue going on. And, 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 and let, me, let me share with you, you know, listen, listen, and it's not limited to the space table. Right, right, right. It's just an indication, a window of what you know. yeah. So, 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 so when I, when I think about what I would do, or what I'm thinking about doing, is an indication of where, where my heart is. Listen, a result of avoiding, of avoiding certain relationships and certain people, and obeying God's word will lead to verse 3, the promise of the blessed. Uh, verse 3, and he shall be. It's not might be, and not, it's not may be, it's not could be. Verse 3 says, and he shall be. He shall be a tree planted by the rivers of water. Listen, when the text makes reference to planet, what it's saying is it's a, a place of permanent residence. He shall be planted. That means that, that this anointing of your life is going to be an ongoing thing. It's not something that you're just borrowing. You know, you're not just renting peace. You're buying it. 
You're planted. The scripture says, shall be planted by the rivers of water. And you understand, the water is what, is what, is what feeds the roots. And the river keeps flowing. The river keeps flowing. It's a tragedy when a believer ignores the root system and begins to wither. The root system it begins, it begins to wither. When the river and water is mentioned in scripture, God's provisions of spiritual blessings are there to help his people. Now listen. A properly nourished tree will bear fruit. Will bear fruit. The scripture says, and you shall bear fruit. You shall bear fruit. You shall bear fruit. In its season. In its season. Now we understand that, that fruit are seldom for the tree. The fruit to benefit for the benefit of others. So the Bible says that they shall bear fruit in season. So, so what it's saying is, if 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 you get these right relationships in your life, understand the people. Don't walk with them. Don't stand with them. Don't sit with them. Then you then you obey God's word by meditating on His word both day and night. You shall be like a tree planted. There's going to be this anointing over your life that's planted by the rivers of water. And you shall bear fruit in its season. <laughs> now, let me, let me bring this home real quick. We've got to go. Listen. And you shall bear fruit in its season. And even when you are not bearing fruit, the scripture says, your leaves will not wither. So in reference is, even when you're not prospering, you'll look like you're prospering. <laughs> You, 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 you could, because the prospering is coming you know, even when you're not because the rivers <laughs> and you shall be planted be like a tree planted by the rivers of water bear fruit these will not wither listen and then that's what I love about the scripture and whatever you whatever you do whatever you do when you align with God's word Obeying his word, being the relationships, you shall prosper. Prosperity is real. Now, I don't believe in going around preaching a prosperity ministry about you, just name it and claim it. You go, you know, you just holler it out three times and, and a bit leave you outside. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in that. You know, listen, but I do not believe in a poverty ministry either. You know, you know uh, the scripture says, that you shall prosper. Yeah. So in, in essence, God is on the hook if I do this over here. Yeah. He's on the hook to have a, a, an anointing on my life. Now, now listen. Now, now, the reality of it is, is that there have been times, Rick, when I have been out of position for God to bless me. You have to be in position. And being in position means that you're walking, you're standing and sitting with the right folk. Yeah, that, that's hard because you know, because there's a folk in our life. In 2018, we gotta say, I like you a lot, but I can't afford to walk with you. I can't afford to stand with you. And I can't afford to sit because I'm trying, God is trying to do something great. I want to do something great in my life, but it's not going to work with me. That, that, that's tight, isn't it? Yeah. Now, now it'd be unfortunate if you get the phone call. <laughs> so everybody think about making the phone call. They, they're making the phone call to somebody. <laughs> Listen, because, and, and, and I gotta open, now, 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 I'm, I'm gonna bring it home to you this way. Um, we got this, uh, we got this little rescue dog at our house. 
I mentioned to y'all sometimes his name is Yogi. Yogi Tyrone. All my neighbors will recognize that he is of Ebony Hugh. Yogi Tyrone is his name. And uh and uh and now Yogi, 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 Yogi is somewhat of a beggar, y'all. He's somewhat of a beggar, you know. Um, uh, and and I probably I used to try to blame it on my youngest, but I probably am guilty the most of it because because um, every time I come into the house and and I grab something, Yogi is staring right at me. I mean, he, now listen, now listen, he, he got good sense, but he, he polishes himself just so. He just looks there, you know, and 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 so uh, and now because my heart's not right. From time to time, I'll try to act like I don't see him, and I'll turn my back to him. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and Yogi will come around and, <laughs> and just sit there and stare. And then, you know, then I'll give Yogi a treat. Okay. Yogi understands that if he's going to receive what he's looking for, he needs to be in the right position. Far too often, I'm asking God to do something for me in my life and I am out of position. Question yourself, and each one of us has to examine our hearts and say, God, am I out of position for you to bless me? So, 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 yo, 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 listen, let me tell you, let me tell you, now listen. Here's a beautiful thing, and, and, and I'm going to tell you that uh, once I've given Yogi the tree, Yogi then will follow me around the house. <laughs> Wherever I go, <laughs> if I sit on the sofa, Yogi going to sit right there with me. If I say I'm going to take me a real quick power nap, Yogi want to take a power nap too. Uh, Yogi understands this. Something that took me a long time to, to gather. Yogi does not necessarily focus on the provision. He focuses on the provider. <laughs> Far too often, when we get the provisions, we forget about yeah, the provider. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> listen, because you listen. If you keep in mind and you stay close to the provider, the provisions will always be there. Last one from Yogi. Charlene <laughs> gets mad at me. Sometimes I'll just take a tree and I'll put it on the ground. And I'll say, leave it. And Yogi looking at me, <laughs> looking at the tree. And every now and again, I said, leave it. Leave it. Leave it. And then, I'll say, go ahead and take it. And then he'll take it. Yogi understands the importance of obedience. Because those times, Denise, when, when, when he gets a little hard headed and takes it before I tell him he can take it, I don't give him another treat. See, there's some things that God has done for you. Listen, he put you in position, he says, but it's not time. Listen, see, listen, you're anointed, but it's not your appointed time. And you took it before the appointed time. And he says, well, listen, I can't trust you. I gotta teach you something. I gotta mature you and raise you up before I. Hmm. The word of God makes it clear. Blessed is the man who walk in that, stand in that, sit in that. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And that's what he does. He meditates on it both day and night. Listen, we get these things right, the scripture then makes a promise. 
and he shall be like a tree. Uh, the waters will keep on flowing. And feeding. And feeding. See, listen. But I don't have to worry about if God's going to provide. Listen, all I do is just stay in contact with God and the provisions will come. The scripture says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor is seen begging for bread. I know, no matter what, there's other folk getting laid off, and he's making a way. Listen, listen, if I get laid off, I know you're going to provide for me anyway. How do I know? That folk in his who lost their job and I'm unemployed for a year and still gaining weight. He's made a way.